Let's get electrified with electricity and water. Just like in City Skylines 1 and City Skylines 2, the electricity and water are very critical for your city. Without electricity and water, your city cannot function. Now the player can put the cables either overground or underground. Groundwater is water that is underground and that has to be accessed with the groundwater pump. Groundwater is a somewhat limited resource. If you overpump it, then it will run out. The emergency battery station is a support building for your electricity city service. It can support your electricity grid in dire times. The emergency battery station is a great companion for the solar power station. During the daytime, the solar power station can charge up the emergency battery station, and during the nighttime, the emergency battery station can release the energy back into the electricity grid. The game features two different kinds of cables, the high voltage and the low voltage. The high voltage can transfer a lot of energy via the single cable line. Uh, the low voltage cables transfer a low amount of electricity by themselves. The low voltage cables are also built into the roads. The cables have a limit to how much they can transfer. So if you are powering a whole district via the low voltage power cables, it can cause some bottlenecks. To bypass these bottlenecks, you can either build more cables to the area or build a high voltage cable into the district and then transfer that into the low voltage via the transformer station. All your favorite electricity buildings from City Scanners 1 are back in City Scanners 2. They have been powered up and they are now even bigger and better. Just like with other city services, the electricity and water and sewage buildings have a ton of upgrades. Upgrades bring variety and options for you as a player, so you can either improve your city productions or electricity capacity storage or sewage treatment or water and pumping and... <laughs> <laughs>